In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome, and blessed Lenten season that we're starting, as we start this, the, the Lent tomorrow, God willing, a beautiful time, and time for spiritual growth, and time for spiritual uh, revival, as we all say, and we call this, as the church always uh, taught us that this is the spring of the whole spiritual life. This is the time that we take, 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 and then based on that, we continue to live the season. And this is the beauty of the church and the beauty of the calendar of the church. Not again just days, as we always say, but that we are going through those cycles. And every time we get into something, it's a, it's a, it's a reminder for us, basically, of who we are and what we have and how we ought to live and how we ought to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to the Lord himself. For those who probably know, those of us who have been in the church for, for, forever, or those who are still you know, learning, still or new in the church, you know, it's important to understand something. And maybe again, you know, the without, well, it's not there yet, so it's good. Uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't know. What is the gospel response during the uh, fast, during the Lent, starting from today? What is the gospel response? The gospel response, not the, the reading. The, after this, after we uh, finish with the, with the sermon, and then we see all together the gospel response. What is that? Hmm? This is the normal. Blessed are those, right? Our Father. Our Father. We have to know this. We have eight, eight, how many weeks? Seven weeks to practice this, right? So once... You, 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 you hear the gospel during the Lent, during the Lent, the response right away is our Father, J.P. Nyot. Right? Why is that? Why is that? Why do you think the church put this particular response and him during that great Lent? And the question will also be why we're reading this part today. Yes, it talks about giving alms, giving praying and, and fasting and do not do this and do not do like the, be like the hypocrite. But then it definitely stresses the fact that when you pray, say, right? actually the, the translation, it's more and more in, in, in the other gospels, whenever you pray, not when you pray, whenever you pray. Right? That's why in the beautiful Orthodox and Coptic Orthodox Church, we always pray by saying what? Our Father. And that's why we always say it what? Slowly, right? <laughs> we don't just kind of go through it and mumble it because we're, it's just a part of this. No, there is a reason. There is a reason for that. But why, again, why did the church put that hymnology mind to say and to recite and to say all together? By the way, the hymns is not only for those people who are here. This is for all of us, right? The people say, after the gospel, the people, all of us say, our Father who art in heaven. Why is that? Good question. Right? We'll see. Reminder of who we are. Right? We'll, we'll, we'll get to we'll talk about it more and more. But look at this. Listen to this. You know, St. Cyril of Alexandria, when he's contemplating about this passage in Luke 11, verse 1, he says this. O boundless liberality, O incomparable gentleness, and that befits him alone. He bestows upon us his own glory. He raises slaves to the dignity of freedom. He crowns man's state with such honor as surpasses the power of nature. He brings that to pass which was spoken of old by the voice of the psalmist. I said, you are gods and all of you, what? All of you are what? Children of the most high. All of you children of the most high. So again, what does that have to do with the, with the, with the land, with fasting? With fasting. You know, whenever we look at the fast or start to count down how many days are left, you know, especially, you know, us who are, are very, very familiar with the Coptic calendar, and once this happened, then this is happening, and, you know, we start just counting down and uh, 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 feel bad that, you know, we have less days to eat freely, and we're now we're going to go into that 55 days, and why is it 55? And you see, and you feel, and you start to think about the, the land as what? As something that is preferable? Something that is light, something is punishment, burden, right? 
something that we have to, oh, I can't wait. You know, from now, so when is the feast again, <laughs> right? You know? And you have that mindset of this is something that we are obligated to do with. But the church is reminding us of something else. Don't look at this, as you've been talking about it the last four weeks of, of the month of Amshir, right? The spiritual food. He's, the church is one, wants to tell us that, you know what, remember first, you are going to maybe struggle and suffer. Yes, fasting is not easy. It's not, you know, you can't just go ahead and eat whatever you want to eat. There are certain things, certain, you know, as if, if, if we just talk about the food, right? But it, it's much more than that. But even that aspect of the, of the food, it's not, you know, the convenience of, of life, right? But he's telling us, you know, remember, keep your mind on him. The one who bestows that great gift to us in order to make us what? Children of the Most High. Children of the Most High. And this is why every time we read the scripture during the Great Lent, we are reminded by our Father who art in heaven. Because remember that you're not alone. You're not going through this life alone. You're not just giving me something in order to say, okay, here I am, Lord, I fasted for you. So like what? As you said in the Old Testament, you know, I don't want your fasting. I didn't even ask you to fast. You are the one who said, we'll, we will fast. It's a reminder that who we are in heaven. And it's a reminder how we should live this life. And it's a reminder that we can go through this, as John Chrysostom said it before, that the, the, the fast of the flesh ends, but the fast of the spirit will never Will never end. There is a story in the, in the uh, church fathers about a monk that lived on his own for 53 years. And during the Great Lent, one of the monks would go around. At that time, there were no actual monasteries like what we see now, but people were living isolated. So a monk would go around on Sunday, like today, and go around and just kind of like, okay, yell and tell people that fasting is tomorrow. Fasting is tomorrow. We're starting fasting. So this, this you know, uh, uh, anchorite who's living alone, he, he called that monk, like, you know, come here, why are you making all this thing? Like, I've been living here 53 years, I have no idea when is fasting, when is non-fasting. All my life is what? Fasting. All my life is fasting. So don't keep annoying me, <laughs> right? I'm living in fasting. Yes, we can change the food, but we should be living in fasting throughout our lives. Not because we have to, but because we are the children of the Most High because he is our father, because he's, he bestowed that glory on us. So now we come to him and say, you know what, I can't wait to fast, because this is the least that I can give you out of love, because that's how much you love me. That's how much you love me. And that's why when the Lord and with the church beauty in preparing us put this week, week's gospel of, of, of St. Matthew chapter 6 in order to remind us when you pray, whenever you pray, not when you pray, whenever you pray, pray saying our Father, because you need to remember this. You need to remember that every, every single thing that we do, we do it because of that, because of that. Again, you know, there is no obligation in Christianity. There is no sharia, there is no, there is no do this and do that. There is love, there is love. I come here and say, what? because of that, I wanna give you all my life. Because of this, because you have called me son, and allow me to call you father, you know what, I will never take anything away from you. I'll give you, what else that you, do, that you want me to give? And I will pray in my prayer, I said, Lord, really, what is it that you want me to do? How can I really be your child? How can I be your son? How can I be your daughter? With changing food, that will be very cheap. I'll be in school, and I'm gonna fast, I'm gonna eat all this kind of food, so here I am. What are you talking about? But I come with this, mindset of love, of sacrificial love, and say, you know what? Because you are allowing me to call you Father, I want to be under your feet. Because you will give me my identity. You will give me my contentment. You will give me what I want in every, every single thing. So again, in a practical way, what does that mean? As we are taking practical steps into that beautiful season, that beautiful season. And I really hope that we all start fasting together as a congregation together. Because as we said before, if one is weak, the whole body is weak. If one is strong, we are all strong. This is the time to be all together. And that's why actually the three things that, that 
when we see our Father that brings us all together, is number one, we all share together. What do we share together when we say our Father? Share Him, the one Father. We all conquer together, and we all grow together. And this is, that should be our mindset as we walk into that beautiful season of fasting, that we share together. We come together and share together. We fast together. We fast together. You know, in, in, in the beautiful Pauline epistle today, St. Paul, in his first epistle, epistle, the second epistle to the Corinthians, and he talks about all what he's done. And then look at what he, at the end of this passage. Again, after going that, you know what, how much he suffered for the church in journeys often, in perils of waters, in, in, in perils of the Gentiles, in, 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 and then he goes on in verse 28, chapter 11, verse 28, and he goes, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. He's concerned all the time about what? All the churches. All the churches. Even in he, when he is in prison, even if he is struggling, but saying what, you know, this is, this is my responsibility. I share that concern. Let's share together. Let's take the season as we move on this great land together with that one mindset. Let's share. Share our fasting. Share praying for each other. Share being concerned about each other. So share that we are all have one father and we all have to live that life together as his children. A father that has three, four children, he is not joyful unless every single one of them is a good father, a good child, right? And if one of them is not, then it brings so much, it breaks the heart. But we come to him, all of us. Let's share together. Number two, we conquer together. St. Cyril of Alexandria says something beautiful. It says, by eating, we were conquered in Adam. By eating, we were, we were conquered in Adam. By abstinence, we conquered in Christ. When Adam ate, we were all conquered by the serpent in Adam. But when Christ, the second Adam, comes, we are all, by abstinence, by abstinence, we conquered in Christ. We are more than victorious, as St. Paul says, right? So let's make this time of land, not time of complaining, not time of just waiting and counting the days when we will break the fast, but let's make it a time that we really conquer. Evaluate ourselves every day. See what are the things that need to be conquered? What are the things that we've been conquered by? Because we ate, whether again it's this, the actual food or we eat whatever we want to eat and cause us to do what, to be conquered, as Adam did. If we don't take some time and evaluate and be very diligent and write down at the end of the day, here are the things that I'm struggling with today. But you know what, I know that I can conquer every single thing. We'll talk about this in two Sundays. I know that I can conquer every single thing. I'm not made in order to be a slave. Again, when we read what, what, uh, what uh, uh, Sir of Alexandria says about our father, he goes like this again. He crowns man's state with such an honor as surpasses the power of nature. He brings that pass which was spoken of old by the voice of Psalmist. And then he goes on. He rescues us from the measure of slavery bestowing upon us by his grace that which by nature we possess not and permits us to call God Father. That's why in the, Pauline, in the Catholic epistle today we're talking about being partakers of the divine nature, moving us from being slaves into being his own, his own. What is it that we need to conquer? Let's take this time as we pray during the liturgy to really evaluate and see. You know, there is nothing wrong at all when I come in front of him, in front of myself, and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. I'm so much defeated by this. It's enough. It's enough. I don't want just another Lent, another season, to go through it and then go back again. And what, all what we get out of the Lent is just the food that we eat and the food that we don't eat, and that's it. And we go on from one pit to another, to a deeper and deeper and deeper, to the point that we can't even breathe. It's time for victory. We were conquered in Adam, and we are conquered, and will conquer in Christ. So 
share, conquered, and then finally, another thing that we were talking about yesterday during the Bible study as we finished St. Peter, Second Peter, we grow together. When we share, when we conquer, we have to do what? We have to grow together. And this is the beauty of the journey of the land. You take it from one step to another, by the treasures, by the temptation on the mount, by the prodigal son, by the laid, the paralyzed, by the Samaritan, by the blind, by the conquered entrance into Jerusalem. It's a journey that we're moving together. We grow together. We grow together. I really pray that after this land, to like, we thank God, that was, that was a time of growth for me. And we won't be able to do this unless we have a spiritual father or mother, spiritual person that guides us and tells us what to do and what not to do. And we listen and we pray together. And as St. Paul says that I am suffering for each one, your father, your spiritual father and spiritual mother will suffer with you. Will suffer with you in order to be all victorious, see the victory of the resurrection at the end. Let's share together, let's conquer together, and let's grow together. Another quote from St. Cyril also said, by the food that springs up from the earth, our earthly body is supported. Right? The food that springs from the earth gives support for our earthly body, and seeks for its sustenance that which congregate with it. But the rational soul, the rational soul, is nourished unto spiritual healthness by the word of God. And here in the, in the original Greek, he's playing on the word, the logiki is nourished by the logo. The, the rational soul is nourished by the logos, the word of God himself, which is on the altar every day. Let's make this time a time of actual sharing, time of conquering, and time of growing together, growing together. This is the beauty of the church, the beauty again, why all those seasons, and why all those things, and why all those things, and we don't understand. And can we skip this, and can we skip this, and can we do this, and we try to compromise, and we try to, we, are, we don't understand what we have. We don't understand what we have. And we will never grow, we'll never be able to conquer whatever is allowing us to stay as slaves unless we walk this path. Together. Together. That's why we are not strong, because we're not together. We don't fast together. We don't pray together. We don't care for each other together. This is the beauty of the church, the body of Christ, the house of the living God. To him, the glory now and forever, to the ages of all ages. Amen.